Hello and welcome to this week's episode um, of G24's Focus for this month on daily Bible reading. The purpose of this um, series of short reflections is just to encourage us as we journey on into this year to go beyond um, the corporate anointing of Sundays and Thursdays when we come together to dig deep into God's word but to actually take that to a point where we can actually cultivate a daily habit or a habit of daily engagement with God's word, um, as simple as daily Bible reading. What would that look like? Why should we do it? Why don't we do it for those that don't do it? Those are the kind of things that we just want to quickly reflect upon. So today, um, for this week's episode, we're just going to reflect on the question of why not? Why don't some people do it? And then why should we actually do it? And of course, the reasons are myriad and they are unique to different people depending on their context. For some people, it's just not a priority. Um, They don't place such premium on God's word in their lives. And that could be due to so very many reasons. It could just be a matter of um, their exposure uh, to God's word in their upbringing, in a manner of speaking. Um, It could be for so very many reasons, really, but that's one major factor, the level of prioritization that we give to God's word. Some people just don't rate it that high on their list of to-do things. Some people say whatever you really, really do consider to be very important, you make time for. Another possible reason is some people still have um, reservations about the Bible. Um, about seeming contradictions or about placing it on par with some other books that they engage with, whereas the Bible is a book like no other. Um, For some other people, it's a matter of not knowing the methodology or technique or even the tools or resources that could help them to diligently develop this habit. And for some people, it's the fact that they just feel unqualified. Why should I, of all people, um, I mean, what will I possibly understand if I open to the book of Habakkuk to read on my own without any pastor there to teach or to ex- make exposition on what I'm reading? So those kind of reasons and, of course, very many more that we could give is part of why people don't do this. But why should we actually do it? To answer the question of why, I'm going to point us to three scriptures. The first is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It says in the KJV, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. As newborn babes, the same way newborn babies naturally and instinctively desire the milk of their mom so that they can grow. That should be our response and attitude towards God's word. As newborn babes, we should desire, we should have the appetite for God's word, why that we may grow thereby. So the first reason is there is no way you will grow spiritually minus God's word. It's the instrument of our growth. It's what helps us to grow. The second scripture is in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. The writer of Hebrews says, We have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, but you still need someone to teach you the elementary truths about God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. And then it goes on to say anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. In other words, the emphasis here goes beyond what we saw in 1 Peter 2 to as newborn babes, to this new point of maturing and so maturity coming to a point where by the reason of your consistent and regular exposure to God's word, you are able to know the difference between what is good and what is wrong and not in the same sense of how the world judges it, but in the sense of how the word God himself judges it. And that comes not just from getting information, it comes from reading and then applying Because as far as God's word is concerned, the opposite of ignorance is not knowledge. It is actually obedience. It's not what you know from God's word. It's how much of it you obey that makes the difference. So that's the second scripture. The last scripture that I'm going to point us to is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Many of us would have 
heard verse 16 before. All scripture is God breathed. That's verse 16. All scripture is God breathed. Some version says inspire. And it's useful for teaching. In other words, it's going to structure your thinking. It's useful for rebuking. In other words, it will tell you where you are out of line and out of bounds. It's useful for correcting. In other words, it's going to show you how to conform to the will of God. It's also useful for training in righteousness. In other words, it's going to show you God's planned way to live. How God expects of us to live. Verse 17 now tells us the main reason, what's the end of all this? So that the servant of God, and servant of God there is not pastor, servant of God being you and I, anyone that serves the Lord, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. In other words, if you want to serve God acceptably, you need to be grounded in this scripture and not just the part of it whole scripture that is divinely inspired by god so if you look at that why should we do it three major reasons to grow spiritually to mature spiritually and then to be spiritually effective spiritual growth spiritual maturity spiritual effectiveness and this year whatever unit you are plugged into in church to serve we are trusting god that we will serve god more acceptably and to do that part of the tools Part of the rudimentary tools for that will be a daily engagement with the word of God. And we're trusting God from the end of G24. We're trusting God that all of us would be more intentional. Those of us that have always done it will do it even with more intentionality. And those that this might be new to will catch up on the train and also do it. Come next week, Monday, we'll make yet another post to unpack this further by beginning to point us to some tools that could also further help us in this quest of daily Bible reading. Till then, keep reading your Bible. God bless you. Bye.